Just a couple of housekeeping items um, while we give some other people time to join. Um, we are going to be sending out a link to the recording and to the slides after the fact. Um, we have the Q&A chat window enabled. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. If you have questions as Michael is going through the slides, do please put them in the chat window. We'll take the Q&A at the end. And with that, I will kick it over to Mr. Trachtenberg. Hi, good morning. Um, uh, so uh, nice to meet you all today. Um, so my name is Mike Trachtenberg. I'm a Susan's architect for New Signature. And what we wanted to talk about today is um, some information around um, backup, recovery, business continuity, and what all of those um, things look like. Um, when we start to think about those, each one of those different components have a different, um, uh, I guess something else comes to mind, right? If we're, if we're talking about, um, you know, the challenges that you have in your organization, right? A lot of times you say, well, we need to be ready for a disaster or we need to be ready for an event that might take place in our organization. And that could be things like loss of data. It could be the disconnect of an, uh, of a, an office or a site or a data center location in some capacity. And then when you think about how do you plan for those situations, you do that in different ways. And when you do that in different ways, you also have to take into account the many layers of complexity that your, your organization has, right? So um, the hardware element, the, the hypervisor element, the applications that are sitting inside of operating systems, all of those things kind of pile up and build a lot of complexity with how do you keep your business running in the event of a disconnect when you have all of these hardware considerations, all of these different uh, platform considerations? And then how do we uh, not only stay up and running, but how do we then um, uh, move forward after we regain con connectivity or how do we move, move forward once we've alleviated that, uh, that issue? So lots of considerations there and lots of complexities. And this is why organizations sometimes struggle with um, those those concepts, right? We, you know, just doing backups is not enough, right? Because if you were to just back up your data or just back up, you know, applications and, and, and virtual machines and things of that nature, you know, in the sense of a disaster or if something was to happen to your data center, like a water damage, right? Uh, you have to get new hardware. You have to then um, get the operating system environments back. You have to restore things onto that. And that's a tremendous amount of time and effort to try to rebuild something like that. All right, so um, when we talk about, you know, those challenges, right, uh, obviously, you know, a lot of the disparate systems might be one of them, right? You have multiple solutions. Each one of those require their own type of solution to, to, to manage, right? If it's hardware, you know, you have to replace hardware. If it's um, the software, you know, you might, uh, an application, that application's data has to be backed up. The application has to be built in an HA, highly available, no single point of failure type of scenario. Um, if you're implementing some type of disaster recovery or some type of uh, business continuity solution in order to make those things work all the time or even through disaster, it can it can be quite taxing, right? Um, and trying to find you know a solution to do all that is um, not very easy to do at all. So why do we look to other areas in order to do that, right? Um, and why, what, what is something that, you know, extending backup and things of, uh, uh, of that nature to the cloud make a lot of sense, right? So one of the things is, you know, when we look at just on-premise, right, uh, you, can, you can have your data center, you can have multiple data centers, you know, if you are very, um, well-equipped uh, environment with a lot of IT expenditures, you can have like duplicate data centers. You can have one data center, um, you know, it's your primary data center, and then a secondary data center that is essentially a mirror of your first one with, you know, replication between the two and matching hardware sets across both. That would be a very ideal state, but that's definitely not a state that most organizations can, can get to or even afford, right? So, if um, and then you're still reliant on um, either one or both of those data centers, uh, which is quite taxing. So in the event that one of those data centers go down, or let's say you can't even afford to do it in that fashion, or you don't have the manpower to do it in that fashion, well, you know, eventually some hardware element is always going to to fail. 
there's always going to be some level of of interruptions, right? Every data center has, you know, a number of outages, a number of downtime, and the cost for those things of when they are down is astronomical, right? And all of that cost directly equates to um, to downtime in whatever it is that your business is actually performing, right? So if you're, you know, crunching data sets, if you're, um, you know, uh, doing analysis on data, if you're, you know, doing uh, construction services, any of those things, once you lose your um, ability to connect to your resources, it is purely uh, uh, um, revenue that you cannot generate. And, you know, there's a lot of statistics on how much is lost every single year based upon data centers going down. All right, so why do we then want to look at the cloud or why do we want to look at um, Microsoft's Azure solution in order to alleviate those types of, of, of concerns? Well, there, there's a few reasons. I mean, obviously, if we said that there is, you know, one platform that gives you the ability to, um, to alleviate almost all of those concerns and to do it uh, heterogeneously across any platform that you're currently using on-prem and to distribute that through um, through thousands of data centers and be able to, to move it all across the world with um, resiliency, with um, without having to have a great uh, level of effort for implementation, then that sounds like a really great idea. And that's exactly what Microsoft is trying to provide. It's trying to provide uh, through the through their Azure platform the ability to continue with business con uh, um, continuity in the event of some incident in your data center, and then also give you a place to do backups and 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 more. So just uh, from a, a starting point, when we start to think about um, the uh, uh, if a disaster was to happen, you you now have a one place to go in order to. To, to leverage a whole host of platforms so that your data, your um, uh, business goals can be met and your data is secure. All right, so we're gonna break this into really two two sides of the table where one, we're looking at that that um, business uh, uh, continuity. It's in the, in the event of something happen, you, you know, so let's say a, a water main bursts on the floor above your data center, and then now your data center becomes flooded and damaged, right? What is the amount of time it's going to take you to continue operating just as if nothing was ever happened, right? So, uh, so what Microsoft has provided there is this idea of um, complete business continu continuity. When that event happens in a data center, there is an automatic and immediate failover to the cloud, and your um, your virtual machines, your your machines that were physical, they automatically fail over to the cloud, and you're able to uh, continue working just as if nothing happened. So that's one side. The other side is backup, right? Backup is this is no different than the backup you've been doing for a long, long time, right? You back up to disk, and then you 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 ship that disk offsite somewhere. So now it's still you back up to disk, you ship the you you back up those disks to the cloud, or you back up directly to the cloud. Right. So the idea behind that is your backups then become off-site um, instantly. They become uh, cloud-ready, and you're able to pull them back down when and if you should ever need them. Um, these are, are, are two different. They fill two very different needs, but they're two parts to the one story of how do you become um, really independent of one single data center, and you are completely ready for any type of incident that may occur uh, to, to, to your uh, technology environment. So when we look at those two things together, obviously the disaster recovery is something catastrophic, immediate, right? But it's also something that gives you pause for um, the event of, you know, if you had to give some type of justification to a regulatory body or to clients or to, um, you know, other, you know, uh, uh, board members and say, what is our plan for some type of disaster or some type of catastrophic failure? How are we going to stay operational? Or how do you stay operational for your clients in that sense, right? So um, the uh, that Azure Site Recovery gives us the ability to do that. And we'll get into the technologies in a, little, in, in a second. Uh, backups, that's, again, very straightforward. There's there's no difference to what you've been doing before. If you're back, uh, you know, you need to pull back data, you need to get data, data is lost, corrupted, or, 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 or has been altered, and you need to get the original back, backups are there. But now they're just in the cloud where storage is cheaper, where you can save them for longer, and you're not reliant on, you know, shipping tapes uh, through with a blue box to somebody and waiting for them to come pick it up or anything like that. All right, 
so when we start to talk then more about the specific technologies that that are are, are doing this and we start talking about azure site recovery so the idea behind this is is it can tie into your infrastructure environment right it is a service that would get um it, uh it, that would incorporate into vmware into hyper-v into your physical machines and it performs asynchronous replication um between the v the virtual machines or the physical right down to the block level and it will replicate those machines into microsoft's cloud even if you have your machines in other clouds that's fine, right? If you have machines in AWS or you have you're taking advantage of Rackspace and you want to have those machines also be protected in Microsoft's cloud, you can do all of that. And what happens is these machines, um, uh, this serv we have this service running for all of your your environment, and then in the case of that catastrophic event or you know uh, some type of hardware failure, um, the machines that are up in Azure, which are cold will automatically become live and it becomes a cut over. Your, all of your endpoints then, or your end users, your other services can be redirected to the, 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 the machines that are now live running in Azure. And then your business, connect to, uh, um, your business can continue, right? And, and it becomes a very, very small uh, uh, interruption to anyone who's actually using your services. Um, now you can run in the cloud for a period of time, and then in the event of you know, you know once you've uh, alleviated the issues with that event, right? If it was you know water damage, you know you you've cleaned out your your server room, you've gotten your new hardware back, you've um, you know reinstalled you know uh, the the um, you rack and stacked everything, reinstalled the base operating system environments, and you want to pull that uh, you know your machines down from the cloud and go back to on-prem, you can do that too. So, so then your machines that are up in Azure go cold again, and they're ready for if and if and when you ever need them. So, um, so it's a great solution. You're you're not staying in the cloud if you don't want to. Your machines can go right back down to on-prem, and you can run back on-prem. And all of that is, is a is a really great story for you to to be able to 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 tell to again your a board member to clients to you know uh, um, anyone else that you need to justify your um, disaster recovery plans to. Um, aside from just the ability to do all of that with the cloud, um, this technology also gives you the ability to move machines between data centers that you own. So one of the really cool parts is, you know, let's say you're moving a data center, you know, uh, sometimes the idea of how you would even get machines from one data center to the other might seem um, um, quite laborious, but this tool gives you the ability to, to move between data centers uh, yourself. Or if you did have um, two data centers and you were still weary about the cloud and you don't want to run in the cloud at all, um, ASR gives you the ability to fail over to, to one data center in the case in the case that a data, uh, one of your data centers has a problem. And then again, fail back um, if, if and when you need to do that. All right. So, um, so the idea behind this is you have your Azure uh, Site Recovery Service, you have your on-premise data centers, you have um, you know virtual machines in there, you have your users that are, um, are uh, uh, connecting to data in that. Um, your on-premise data center is replicating traffic all the time to Azure Site Recovery right uh, into Microsoft's Azure Cloud. What happens um, once you've set up this service is there's an initial sync, and then after that, it's it's doing synchronous replication all the time, right? Uh, so down in inside the operating system environment, it's always syncing. That traffic is encrypted as well. Uh, for your on-premise environment, you can set up a, a, a VPN connection or an express route, which is a direct link to Azure, um, so that in the event of the failover, the machines are already have that connection up to Azure, and they'll just start to pick up the services from there, right? Um, one of the other things too with this is that you can even test those things. You can perform test failovers. You can do this on a quarterly or, or biannual basis where you actually test and validate that that failover works. You can test it into a sandbox environment if you'd like, or you can test the, the failover into, uh, into a live production cloud environment. And again, run it there for a few days, make sure it's working as expected, and then fail back. If you do all that in, in, in a very... Um, uh, strategic sense. You could even do it with minimal or no um, uh, um, awareness to your, your end user population. And that would be extremely ideal. If you, you could actually design this so that um, they wouldn't even know that they failed over to the cloud or when the fail back happened. So 
So, um, what else does this work for, right? So, yes, it works for virtual machines, and it could be virtual machines um, running all of your 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 um, different services, Oracle, SAP, SQL, um, all, all, all of those things. Um, you can also, aside from just using the ASR services, um, things like SQL have the ability to replicate into uh, uh, Azure automatically. And then SQL itself can have failover into, into Microsoft's cloud. So you don't have to go just at the VM level if you don't want to. Um, there's other ways to, to do other tools where you can do um, Hyper-V level replication, SQL level replication, um, uh, or, or, or the, even down to the physical machines. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You have lots of options in that regard. So one of the other things too that it can be used for is migrations, because I know we're talking a lot about you know if you if if you want to have a machine and you have an incident and the machine then is is live over in in Azure and the um, you might decide well what if I don't want to bring that machine back? Well, you don't have to. This is often sometimes seen as a really great tool for migration, where if you had you know. 20 machines and you're like, eh, you know, let, we failed them over because something happened, but do we really need to bring them back? Well, you, you, if you decide you don't have to, you don't. They can stay over in Azure and be Azure uh, uh, or cloud machines at that point. Another great area to use this is for dev test. What you can do actually is you can basically take a whole swatch of your environment, right? You can take a dev and test environment and you can use these services to fail them over to Azure, put them in a in, a, in their own isolated network, and then you have an exact replica of that environment of that point in time that's in a little sandbox. And you can do multiple iterations of that, right? So if you have, if you wanted to do, you know, five different instances of your environment over five times because it's a, you know, some type of change or some type of, um, if, if, if it was some type of change or if it was some type of, uh, you know, you have different uh, staged environments for levels of production for an application, um, you can fail, use this tool to fail over those at different stages and then use them as different uh, dev test environments all within their own little micro sandboxes. Right? So definitely a, a, a useful tool outside of its uh, initial intent for use, right? So you know the intent is really that you can use this to um, to to fail over your environment in the case of some catastrophic event. But outside of that, you can use it for migrations. You can use it to move machines between your data centers. You can use it to put machines in Azure permanently, and you can use it to build dev test replica environments. Right. So lots of tangential benefits for 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 this technology outside of its original intent. So, you know, going over, you know, some of these scenarios is yes, replication and failover, all of that. Uh, we're, we're, we're starting to reduce the time for continual business con uh, uh, um, connectivity to your resources down from, you know, what could be hours or days or weeks into just a few minutes or if not seconds, depending on, on how you set this thing up. You can do your planned and unplanned failover, and you can build orchestration around that, and you can build plans for these, and you can build documentation that you can provide to other people saying that this is how you do your your your, your failover, and this is what, what your organization has in place in event of a disaster. All right, so now we're going to move into the other side of the fence, which is the, the, the backup technologies, right? So, um, so the, that's all about... Um, you know, keeping your business um, running in the event of disaster. But now we also have the idea of, of you know, what else can we do with backups, right? And again, backup technology, not new. There's nothing new or crazy about this backup technology either, right? It's just, it's giving it to you in an easier way for you to be able to get a great backup strategy in place very quickly and then have that, that, um, off-site in the cloud where it's going to be at the lowest possible cost to you um, really across anything else you can you can find this is pennies on the dollar you know or fractions of pennies on the dollar for um, the cost of getting this data in, in Microsoft's Azure cloud now um, there's a few different solutions with Azure Backup, right? Uh, if you're familiar with System Center, System Center DPM is available. If you're um, looking for something that's a little bit less uh, robust, you have um, Azure Backup Server, which is a, a, a light version of, of, of System Center's uh, data protection manager. 
the the main difference is there is that um, Azure Backup Server doesn't integrate to a tape library, right? So if you're if you're not using tape anyway and you're looking to just back up, you know, your your data to to the cloud without going to tape, this is a great solution for you. Um, there is when we get into the Azure um, Azure Backup. There's also the, an Azure Backup agent, and there's Azure Backup Server. The Backup Server is going to back up your your virtual machines. It's going to back up your large data dumps. It's going to back up um, uh, uh, all of your information from disk. The a Backup agent sits inside of an operating system environment, and it gives you the ability to do file level backups and restores to the cloud. Um, you know, we've seen people use this uh, on on their um, workstations as a means to be able to give the end user the ability to, on a fer per file basis, back up and restore their files. Uh, you can obviously put this on file servers, so you have file server level backup and restores, and you be and you can manage all this through through the Azure console, where you can set retention policies and you can set um, uh, how long, uh, how much data you're storing, and how and how long you're gonna uh, or retain that data once it's been moved up into the cloud. Uh, when we start to think of uh, that long-term data retention, right? Um, uh, how that data grows, this is why that cost becomes so important, right? You know, if you try to maintain that on-prem, th that's why, you know, we find like one of the most expensive solutions to maintain on-prem is large-scale data stores. Um, these things are going to grow exponentially based upon the amount of data that you're storing over time. Obviously, storage providers are, you know, try to pitch, you know, deduplication and um, compression and things of that nature because we know about exponential data growth. Um, but you know, in the in the cloud, that's the best part of it. It doesn't matter when 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 you move backup data to the cloud, you're only paying for whatever you consume, and your retention is 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 all deduped and compressed still. But you're not paying for all that stuff up up front. You pay for you pay for data as you move it up there, not up front. And that's you know great cost savings to to anyone, and why it makes a lot of sense to put um, data uh, backup data up there. I mean, it, this one is 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 quite often the number one thing that people look for moving to the cloud to right away because it's it's just, it is a very quick win. What you can you know what the other things that Azure Backup can do is yes you can back up the VMs yes you can back up uh, you know uh, uh, the data all of this is done um, based upon uh, um, the the backup agents or the backup server. Well, um, there's a few different ways to do it. Again, we can have an agent that does it, or the uh, uh, that sits inside of the operating system machine, or of the Azure backup service that does it. If you have machines in Azure, it can back up those machines in Azure also. So, uh, two different deployment methods, right? Which we which we pretty much just discussed. So, I want to switch gears just a little bit, then say, you know, to talk to you a little bit about New Signature and what we do in all of this, right? So, at New Signature, we're a Microsoft, uh, a pure play Microsoft partner. We, for two years in a row, we were Microsoft US Partner of the Year for 2014 and 2015, uh, not 2016, unfortunately. But we want to help you understand how these technologies can be used in your organization. And then from there, we have a number of different strategies of how we can help you build operate and plan for these things and then um, utilize them to their full capacity. As you said, with even with ASR, there's a lot of different ways you can use it and we're happy to kind of go through all that with you. And we do this across the entire Microsoft stack for, for really any other Microsoft technology that's out there. We are have competencies across the board in all of those. So what we want to do also is take this a little bit further where we have this, what we call our recovery experience where we help organizations such as yourselves set up, obviously, things like ASR with good backup strategies. And then we can actually maintain and manage that for you, where we are monitoring that replication, letting you, we're providing you sandbox test environments for um, those failovers twice a year, where we're getting all of those things um, running and monitor them for you and can execute the, the failover testing for you and then give you a report on all that so you can you have that information in your back pocket to know that you are always ready in the case of some type of catastrophic in, in incident. 
So um, we, we do that through a very scripted process, which we call runbook, right, where we create what's going to happen in the case of a, 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 some type of catastrophic event, um, how we're going to leverage ASR, what our communication plan is going to look like, what does the failover procedures look like, what does the testing um, uh, look like once that happens. And then obviously, what does the fail back procedure look like and what does the communication process look like for that as well. So um, just going back to, to, to this where um, our original uh, use case of how this actually works, our idea for what new signature can provide is we can help you with every aspect of this, including all of the, the testing and failover and so on. So um, obviously, there's a lot to, to that ASR can do. There's a lot where, uh, where new signature can help you with that. Um, what we want to do is help you set up that environment, make sure that uh, um, the, mon the replication is happening properly, uh, perform monitoring on that, give you reports uh, on that, and, and uh, again, all these things that we've already listed. So, um, We also have a number of other service offerings, but today we're, we're talking purely about just ASR and backup and, re and recovery and disaster uh, recovery. So, uh, but at, we do have a whole host of other services that we, that we provide with whether it's just project services, helping you learn about a Microsoft technology, implementing that technology or helping to manage and maintain it inside of your organization. All right, so I uh, wanted to leave at least a few minutes for questions if anyone has any, so. Um, I hope you uh, at least found this information helpful. And if you have any questions, uh, you know we'll be here for a few more minutes. I've been keeping an eye on the chat window and did not see anything. But I know that some people were also having problems viewing the slides. So a lot of it was just being absorbed by listening, uh, which is challenging. So if you guys have questions for uh, Mike, do you want to put them in the chat window? We'll hang out for two more minutes, and then we are going to call it a day. OK, I'm going to stop the recording for posterity here. <laughs>